Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Pixel Lab. I wanted to go over my favorite update in R19. That is the updates to the Voronoi Fracture. There's just a lot of really, really useful updates to it and I wanted to walk you through them. So I have a low poly truck. This is from our low poly pack and it just has two keyframes pushing it through this cube and I have a dynamics tag on the pickup and also on the floor. So let's just take this cube and we'll put it inside the Voronoi Fracture. So we'll dump that in. And let's go to the Voronoi Fracture and add a simulation tag rigid body and let's see what this looks like. So right away we need to make sure that we have this set to on collision because it's already starting to fall apart before the truck hits it. So let's go to the Voronoi Fractures tag. Let's go to dynamics and let's change the trigger to on collision. And then let's also go to the collision and just change the inherit tag to apply tag to children and we'll just click all to make sure. So let's see this. All right, so this is working perfectly. All right, so in the Voronoi Fracture, um, let's go to our Sources tab and click on the Point Generator, and we can up the amount. So we'll just do 200 for this tutorial. So let's hit play here. All right, so this is pretty similar to what we had last year in R18. And um, it's a really great start, but R19 takes it to the next level with a lot more options. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that it's completely breaking apart and we want to have more control over what parts are going to break and what parts aren't. So let's just jump into the uh, connectors tab, which is brand new in R19, and let's just click create fixed connector. So if we click that, you're going to notice that we have a connector inserted into the Voronoi fracture. And if we hit play, you can see that already we're going to be able to dial in where these cubes are breaking and where they're stuck. So already we're having a lot more flexibility. So if you want to see what's happening, we can click on our connector and we can toggle uh, always visible. You can see that we have sort of a spider web connecting all these different pieces together. And we can dial these in under the object. We have breaking force and we have breaking torque. So we can just tweak these numbers and dial it in. So if we wanted uh, more of the object to break, we can just dial this down to say one instead of four, and that'll make, make it so that less force will break apart more of it. And you can see that more of our cube is breaking apart here. So that's one way that you can do that. But another way that I really like to work under the connectors options, let's just reset these back to four. And if we go back to our Voronoi Fracture under the Connectors tab, we also have this breaking weight and torque weight slot here. And we're going to use a vertex map to really dial in what parts that we want to shatter. So under breaking weight, we're going to add a vertex map. Let's go to MoGraph and MoGraph Weight Paintbrush. And if we do that, we have a red dot on all these pieces. So that means that all these pieces are going to be treated the same right now. But what we want to do is specify what areas are going to break and what aren't. So we'll kick up the strength a bit. If we go to our painting tab, we can increase the radius. And let's just start painting on these red dots. And you can see that they're turning yellow as we paint over them. So this also creates a little tag here. So if we click back on our Voronoi Fracture, we can drag that into the breaking weight slot. And now if we hit play, we should get some very different results. You can see that we can specify exactly what pieces are going to be stuck and what pieces are going to be dynamic and allowed to break and fall apart. So if we ever wanna uh, update this, we'll just click back on our tag and make sure we're under our MoGraph Weight Paintbrush tool. We can go under Options, instead of Add, we can click Erase. So we could erase, say, this side and see what that looks like. So now this side is also going to be able to fall down. And then if we want just the top part to be able to fall down, we could erase the top then we can add back in that side. And now the two sides will hold, but the top will cave in. So this is a really, really great way to uh, just dial in exactly what's happening. So let's delete that tag right now. And let's also talk about two stage breaks. And because we have the connector and we can dial in what parts are breaking, we can now have two stage breaks. And it's really easy to do. So we'll take that truck We'll delete the keyframes off the front part. We're gonna move this truck over a little bit and we'll make another keyframe. We'll go back to the beginning and we'll push it back over here. And now we have a second truck running into it. And because we have things connecting, 
we can do multi-stage breaks really easily. So that's another great feature um, of R19, really dialing things in. All right, so let's jump back into the connectors. Let's delete that connector and we'll delete that second pickup truck and let's talk about some of the other tabs. So we also have geometry glue. If we enable that, there's a few different types, but one really interesting one is called cluster. And if we do that, it's going to override the different pieces and make them these giant clusters, which kind of sticks together the pieces in a really interesting way. And if you look inside, there's a lot of really jagged edges. and It's a very cool look. So we can increase the cluster amount and it just kind of gives it a little bit of a different look on the way that they're breaking apart. So you might want to play around with that. That is the geometry glue. All right, and then the other big update is making these look a little bit more authentic. So right now they're very uh, straight. All the cuts look very uh, geometric, very computer generated. So we have this detailing tab, which is gonna help us with that. All right, so if we click enable detailing, it's gonna take a second to load. Um, it's a, It can get a little bit dense, but if we hit play, you'll notice that it's a little bit slower. Of course, we have a lot more geometry. But when this truck breaks through, we're gonna be able to see that we now have some noise patterns going on inside of these, uh, these chunks. So you can see that it's based on a, a noise pattern, which we can change right here. So we can change all these settings, the noise strength, we can change what kind of noise. I'll leave it the same, but um, another thing we can do is go to our garage shading to see what it's actually doing. You can see that these are getting pretty dense. Um, and this maximum edge length is basically the resolution. So if we kick this up to say 50, it's gonna get a lot less dense. And then the lower we go, the denser it'll get and the more kind of detail we'll get in that noise. So we'll put that around 20 just so it's not super slow. And here's another thing that we can do to make this more realistic. So the inside now has noise and it looks a lot nicer. We could dial that in, make the noise a little bit smaller, but we still have those really sharp edges on the outside. So what we can do is go to our detailing tab and we can click on noise surface. So if we click that, you can see that everything shifted a little bit and now these are not all straight, but they have some noise. And then another thing we can do is keep original surface, uncheck that, and now we're gonna introduce noise kind of pushing out the pieces as well. So that's another way to kind of dial in, um, just making it a little bit more realistic. All right, last thing I'm gonna cover before we get out of here is the selections tag. And if you want to texture this guy, we can use inside faces, outside faces, and lots of different other options. We also have now vertex maps. So just to give you a quick refresher, if we check on inside faces, we'll get a little tag right here. So that means what we can do is just pick a color, we'll just say green, and we can put that on our Voronoi fracture, and then we can drag our little material tag into the selection. And now the inside is going to be green, and then what we're gonna do is duplicate that. We'll make a red one. And we're gonna put this one, oops, we'll put the green one on here. And we'll go back to our Voronoi fracture and check on outside faces. And we'll get a little triangle that says outside faces. So we'll just drag that into the green one. And now if we go back to Voronoi fracture and go to object, we can uncheck colorize fragments and we'll be able to see what's going on here. So that is how you would colorize the inside a different color than the outside. And there's a bunch more options in here as well. Under selections, you can add um, a bunch of different vertices or vertex maps. All right, last thing I wanna show you and then we will wrap this up. Under the objects tab, we have this scale cells option, which is really, really handy. So if you want to change the way that these chunks are being cut, you can just play with the scale. So if we change the scale to say 20, it's now gonna be sliced up in long, thin strips, and you can use this um, as wood fragments or splinters or shards or something like that. Uh, another thing you can do is um, just cut things along one axis and it'll look like they're just sliced up like a loaf of bread, something like that. So get some really, really cool results just by playing with the scale cells. All right, so that's it. A quick overview of my favorite new features in the Voronoi Fracture. Definitely one of my favorite new updates in R19. I hope this helps you guys out. And as always, thank you for checking out the Pixel Lab. Talk to you next time. Ciao.